Sometimes, exploring means accepting invitations. I'm author and researcher Mike Luoma. Harvey Buford, former president of NERA, New England Antiquities Research Association, has often graciously invited me to see stone sites in his area, southwest Rhode Island and southeast Connecticut, some of which he's helped preserve with his local land trust. We first met up in North Stonington, Connecticut, for a group hike led by Mark Starr. And you can see some of the stone features we did in his book, Ceremonial Stonework, The Enduring Native American Presence on the Land. Mark pointed out possible indigenous serpent effigy rows. The lace coursework along this ledge top stone row is striking. The stonework may display undulations, though the possibility of structural collapse can't be ruled out. And a look from the other side, below the ledge. Much of the apparent indigenous stonework here is constructed with spalls, broken off ledge rock, like this stone row, trailing off this ledge. This possible serpent effigy structure was particularly impressive. Its spa-laid organic coursework undulates along the ridge top before turning to dive downhill and terminate in a complex composite boulder and stonework serpent head form. A boulder has been added to, creating the shape suggesting a serpent's head. This is looking down from the turn in the neck towards the head. Mark brought us through a wetland with a low rise in its midst, where we found several possible stone prayers.
we checked out more ledge-involved, possibly indigenous stonework, though the sunny day we had meant it was hard to capture the stonework in photos and video. A possibly perched boulder stood near the limits of the area we covered. Mark showed us to this small enclosure built off of a ledge. A small chamber with a large lintel stone is built into the right hand side. I sketched the feature to try to get a better idea of what we're looking at. Finally, we came to this stone row, with indigenous iconography and undulating stonework. I pointed this out to Harvey and Mark. An undulation. Because that isn't damaged, that's built that way. I don't see any stone here. Very intriguing stonework here in North Stonington, Connecticut. I was next able to join Harvey for a look at sites in the Hopkinton, Rhode Island area. As Harvey invited Tom Elmore of the GeoNav Group and his cutting-edge 3D LiDAR scanning tech to scan three larger stone constructs as part of a documentation project of Harvey's. The first a fascinating and puzzling stone mound with water running through or under it was at a private site. This was not a haphazard stone pile, as construction design features I often find in potential indigenous stone rows were present here.
Here's Tom using his 3D LiDAR scanner technology. Two small stone-lined pits follow the water flow from the stone mound before the water reappears from beneath the ground. This may indicate a larger structure is buried under this dirt. There were potential stone prayers nearby as well. The stone rows around this private property are many and impressive. Though assumed to be farm walls from the 18th century, there are sections which appear to me to be older, and there appears to be apparent indigenous iconography, which may indicate older work was adapted, or perhaps the farm walls were built by indigenous stonemasons. We next headed to the Crown Farm Preserve in Hopkinton. The first feature here was a low stonework, perhaps what remains of a spiral with a tail pointing towards the equinox sunrise across an accompanying potentially indigenous stone row. There was also a new stack, built in the recent past by someone. Please don't disturb the stonework.
Tom once again scanned the feature with his 3D LiDAR scanner. It's hard to say what this is, given its current state, but Harvey hopes developing 3D models might give us some insight. The stone row alongside the feature appeared to display indigenous serpent iconography. This end appeared at first glance to me to be a serpent tail. But a good case was made for it as the head of the serpent as well. After a short hike, we came to the next feature at this site, a larger stone form. This one stands about five feet tall at its highest on its eastern side. A U-shaped opening on one end faces southwest towards the winter solstice sunset. Turning around, the mostly linear feature bends slightly eastward as it points northeast towards the summer solstice sunrise. Could this triangular stone be a Manitou stone? Once again, there are design elements here which point to this being more than a simple farmer's field clearing pile.
A crescent of single stones stretches out off the closed northeastern end. Once again, Tom Elmore scanned the feature using his advanced 3D LiDAR scanning technology. Harvey has also had Mark Starr create 3D models of some of these features. The eastern side is very well constructed. I've seen some preliminary work and look forward to seeing more of how Harvey ultimately presents these techniques for 3D documentation of these larger stone structures. We took a break for lunch and visited Harvey's sheep before saying goodbye to Tom and Harvey and I headed over to a site I'd been hoping to see for some time. The Manitou Hasanash Preserve in Hopkinton. We'll take in that incredible experience in its own video, as that site has a great deal to share. If you want to learn more about possible indigenous stonework in the Northeast, you might want to join our Facebook group, Ancient Stone Mysteries of New England. You can also check out more videos on our YouTube channel. Or pick up my book, Ancient Stone Mysteries of New England, Discovering Ancient History All Around Us, in paperback, ebook, or audiobook. Find out more about all of it at ancientstonemysteries.com. I'm Mike Luoma. Thank you for experiencing these special stone sites in Connecticut and Rhode Island with me.